and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update as of October 14th, 2020. Again, I apologize to my viewers and my subscribers that I was absent yesterday. My car broke down and put me in a really bad mood and I didn't think I was going to be able to actually basically do a good video for you guys. But today I'm actually in a sort of a better mood. My car is actually up and running, but for how long, I do not know. We will find out. <laughs> well, when it comes to the second stimulus check and stimulus package, I will update you to what's basically inside the $1.8 trillion stimulus package that was represented by the Republicans. But I will let you know it does include a second stimulus check for $1,200 plus a uh, $1,000 check for dependents 16 years of age or younger. That's to start off with. The Republicans are hesitant at basically on increasing their stimulus offer past $1.8 trillion because they're worried about the national deficit. Because uh, currently our debt is at, America's debt is basically at $27 trillion. Congressman Doug Collins is pushing to the removal of Nancy Pelosi. Collins says Pelosi is unf me, unfit to run the House of Representatives. The Democrats say with the nomination of Amy Barrett to the Supreme Court that it'll be the end of the Obamacare, a.k.a. the um, Affordable Cares Act. President Trump has tested negative for COVID-19, even though his son, Barron Trump, has tested positive for it. COVID-19 has pushed close to 100 million people into extreme poverty. And the World Bank defines extreme poverty as anyone that earns under $1.90 a day. Johnson & Johnson said that a participant in the COVID-19 trials developed a unexpected illness, so they have stopped their phase three human clinical trials. And basically here are some highlights for what is inside the $1.8 trillion stimulus package presented by the Republicans. As we already know, there is a $1,200 stimulus check plus $1,000 per dependent 16 years of age or younger. An extension of unemployment benefits for $400 a week until the third week of January 2021. This would backdate to September 12, 2020. There's a second round of paytech protection money for $330 billion. A student loan forgiveness program for $25 billion. $25 billion for child care programs, food assistance programs for $15 billion, $150 billion for schools, $175 billion for testing, vaccinations, and health care uh, providers as far as the COVID goes, $10 billion for the United States Post Office, $20 billion for the airlines, $300 billion for state and local government assistance, and there's also business tax credits for keeping employees for $91 billion. And more and more Democrats are being more vocal about people suffering in their in their districts. Because we have a lot of states out there where the Democrats are, are their constituents and the people that live in these districts are basically suffering because the stimulus package is taking so long. And the Democratic people in those states, and I'm sure even there's a few Republicans as well, as well in the states, are also being more and more vocal about how they need to pass a stimulus package and how uh, they want Nancy to close you to basically accept the $1.8 trillion package to help out the people. I do actually have video clip uh, that I've, I've collected for you guys to watch. In fact, I will let you guys watch them at this present time. The members of your own caucus, Madam Speaker, uh, want to accept this deal, $1.8 trillion. Congressman Ro Khanna, yeah, yeah, for example. Wait, 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 but let, wait, me wait, just, wait let me just quote Ro Khanna, a man you know well. I assume you admire him. He's a Democrat. And he just said this. He said, people in need can't wait until February. $1.8 trillion is significant and more than twice the Obama stimulus. Make a deal. Put the ball in McConnell court. So what do you say to Ro Khanna? What I say to you is, I don't know why you're always an apologist, and many of your colleagues, apologists for the Republican position. Rokana, that's nice. That isn't what we're going to do, and nobody's waiting till February. I want this 
very much now because people need help now. But it's no use giving them a false thing just because the president wants to put a, a check with his name on it in the mail. Why not work on That's a deal right. with him and don't let the perfect, as they say here in Washington, be the enemy of the good? Well, I will not let the wrong be the enemy of the right. What's wrong with $1.8 trillion? Dollars? Well, I, you know what? Do you have any idea what the difference is between the spending that they have in their bill and that we have in our bill? Do you realize that they have come back and said all these things for child tax credits and earned income tax credits or helping people who have lost their jobs are eliminated in their bill? Do you realize they pay no respect to the fact that child care is very important for people whose children cannot go to school because they're doing remote learning and yet they minimize the need for child care, which is the, is the threshold with which people, mothers and fathers, can go to work if they have that. Do you have any idea of how under, that's precisely uh, why, Madam short, Speaker, their that, concern? That, that's why it's so, it's so important right now. Yesterday I spoke to Andrew Yang, who says the same thing. It's not everything you yeah, want, but, you know but what? there's you, a lot okay. there. Honest to God, you really, uh, I can't get over it, because Andrew Yang, he's lovely. Yo Khan, Ro Khan, he's lovely. They are not negotiating this situation. They have no idea of the particulars. They have no idea of what the language is. And Congre Congressman Collins introduced a resolution to remove Nancy Pelosi from power. Collins says that Pelosi is unwilling, Pelosi's unwillingness to accept the, um, the stimulus package is basically against the Constitution, combined with the recent actions called into question of her own mental fitness. This is why the House of Rep Representatives demands her removal. The resolution says that Pelosi ripped up the State of the Union speech delivered by the President in February, which is a violation of the U.S. Code 2071, Destruction of Government Property. Collins says Pelosi has shown a decline in mental fitness as well. This is one reason why that they're trying to move her from power because they also, I don't blame them. She's been holding up the stimulus check for how long now? She wants $2.2 trillion and she thinks she has all the leverage in the world while people are out there suffering, starving, and dying because she can't make her mind up what she wants. I mean, first she wanted $3.4 trillion, now she wants $2.2 trillion. And there's 1.1 on the table, and she's not willing to see past her own ego, shall I say, to help the people out there that are actually starving and going homeless because she's playing games. Keep in mind, it's not all the Democrats out there actually playing these games with her. There are there's a lot of Democrats in the House that actually back Nancy Pelosi up with that they want the $2.2 trillion. But there's also a lot more Democrats in the House of Representatives they say, hey, look, you need to pass this bill. People in our, in our districts, they're, they're starving, they're dying, they're going homeless, and we can't have that no more. Pass this bill or we'll get you removed from power. Hence the, the, the resolution that Collins has put forward. And re when the Senate returns on October 19th, this Monday, they will try to pass a standalone bill for the Paytech Protection Money. Because, as we already know, there's $135 billion left over from the last uh, stimulus package known as the CARES Act for the Paytech Protection Money. And it's basically just been sitting there doing nothing. And they're trying to, Mnuchin and Meadows, I believe it is, is actually trying to get the House to release that money so it can go into the businesses and help out the small businesses as well as the self-employed. And if they can pass this bill, they figure they could pass other standalone bills as well. But we probably all know that Nancy Pelosi is not going to allow that to happen because she wants her $2.2 trillion. She does not like to do standalone bills, although she's lied about that too. She tried to pass the USPS bill, which failed. She tried to pass the airlines aid bill, which failed because those are both standalone bills. So basically, Nancy Pelosi is holding up everything. So it's I, I can't blame the Republicans. And I can't blame all the Democrats. I can blame some of the Democrats and Nancy Pelosi. As far as uh, there's actually been a second case of an American citizen getting COVID-19 that has been confirmed. 
he was found uh, COVID positive, I think back in April. And then they tested him in May and he was clean. He basically recovered from COVID. And then they tested him again in June and he reconfirmed the fact that he had COVID-19 a second time. And why they have not disparate released this information is they want to make sure that everything that they said was valid and that people can catch COVID-19 more than, more than once. I think they can actually uh, catch it more than twice too, but we'll find out. Um, this was a 25 year old man in Nevada that was the first person to get COVID-19 twice that they confirmed. And Mitch McConnell wants to, uh, oh wow. He wants to put together another skinny bill that probably will not pass the House of Representatives. Another half a trillion dollar skinny bill for the PPP, extension unemployment, and I think a few other small things that probably will not pass the House of Representatives because Nancy Pelosi will see that as being too small and not great enough for the American needs. And I hate to say this, but we do need to remove Nancy Pelosi from power because by her playing all these games and saying, I'm not going to accept this, I'm not going to accept that, American people are dying because she is not letting anything go through. So Nancy Pelosi needs to be removed from power permanently and put on she needs to be retired basically from, from the house of representatives and as far as amy conan barrett the supreme court nominee goes they're suspecting that uh it, when she gets done with all of her stuff she has to go through to be confirmed as a supreme court nominee that they will have a vote on the obamacare which is the affordable Air cares act and basically abolish it because when it first came out when Obama brought it out in 2012, he basically said that, uh, I think it was 2012, it could, it could have been another year, but when Obama basically brought out the Obamacare, Affordable Care Act, he basically said that if people did not have insurance, they would be fined on their taxes. In other words, if they get a fine on their taxes, they would get a whole lot much back. Well, later on, the Senate decreased that fine from what it was set at to a zero dollar amount. So basically, that's why people aren't getting fined for not having health care is because the, the fine for health care is a zero dollar amount. And Texas basically tried to sue the state of the United States of Utah, the United States of America, sorry, is saying that the Affordable Care Act, since it does not have a penalty included with it of a dollar amount, that it was unconstitutional and they basically won. And it went to, it also went to this uh, was it appeals court to because because of the whole constitutional thing, and they also agreed that it was non-constitutional. So when the this new person gets into the Supreme Court, they're expecting to vote on the Obamacare, and it's probably get it's probably gonna be abolished by a vote of five to four. So basically, when Amy Barrett gets in the Supreme Court, expect the. Uh, basically expect the Affordable Care Act to disappear completely. And we also understand they also might also talk about something about abortions. I hate to say this, but there's cases where women need to have abortions. If they, if having this child could put their life at risk and the easiest way to solve it is to get rid of the child once it, before which is a certain term that is, then it's a, then it's a right. If they were raped or otherwise forcibly preg impregnated, uh, same thing goes as well, because it was an unplanned childhood, and the child that's inside them should not be inside them. But these are just my outtakes on abortion. But um, this is basically also the people my the end of my broadcast for today i i do apologize again for not being available to do a broadcast yesterday i will try to keep up on my broadcast for my viewers and for my subscribers so until next time you guys have a wonderful wednesday please stay safe out there and remember we're all in this together